Hello, this is Sarah Kite with UT Extension in Ming County. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to talk about home food preservation. And sometimes it's too hot in the kitchen and you don't feel like getting your water bath canner out. You don't feel like getting your big pressure canner out. Or you just don't have room in your pantry or jars or not available for you. Um, so one good way to do some home food, food preservation is freezing. You have lots of great things out there that you can freeze, so let's get started. Freezing is one of the easiest and least time consuming ways to preserve. It's one of my favorite ways to preserve my green beans and my summer squash, my fruits, vegetables. Um, lots of freezing happens, but make sure you do it the right way to get a good quality product when you're ready to eat. So there are some advantages. Many foods do freeze well. Um, they retain a good quality, good color, good texture. It's less time. Sometimes it's a personal preference that they like. People like how frozen fruit, that's a tongue twister, frozen food tastes once they cook it up. Some like how canned foods taste. Some like a frozen green bean, some like a canned green bean. So see what you like. There's also some disadvantages. Um, some texture is less desirable after changes in freezing process. Sometimes you'll have to buy an extra freezer if you don't have room in your own freezer. So sometimes you don't have enough storage space for all those frozen foods. Does freezing kill microorganisms like salmonella? Freezing does not sterilize or kill those, but it stops the growth of those foods. So foods that are frozen at zero degrees or below are safe and definitely from those bacteria. However, the problem is with keeping foods for a long period of time frozen, it changes the quality of that food, so be careful. There's something in your produce called enzymes and your other foods, your meats, and the, the quality changes are caused by the enzymes. And enzymes are small proteins in your food. They start to contribute to the undesirable changes in your fruits, like browning. The longer your ground beef is in the freezer, the more brown that you might see the color change to. It also can cause a loss of some nutrients. But freezing slows down these chemical changes that affect the quality of your food and spoilage. So enzymes are inactivated by heat. That's why we want to water blanch our fruits and vegetables. It also helps the enzyme to stop working and not brown foods, not make them too mushy. And blanching destroys microorganisms on the surface of your vegetables. It also helps things like broccoli and spinach be more compact, not take up as much room. But over blanching results in the cooked vegetable, which gives a loss of flavor, a loss of color, and loss of nutrients. So under blanching stimulates enzyme and is worse than not blanching at all. So blanching is very important. If your produce is going in the freezer and it's looking good, you want to do some blanching to stop the enzymes from working. Um, I'll show you a chart later on, but the National Center for Home Food Preservation has a chart for blanching times. That way you don't have to try to guess. Guessing is never good. Make sure you do it the right way to get a good product. So in fruits, enzymes and fruits cause browning. Think about a banana or an apple. Within two minutes, it's starting to turn brown. So fruits are not typically blanched because most people prefer the uncooked version. Instead of blanching, enzymes are controlled by using chemical compounds. So do you know what you might add to an apple to not let it brown? Some ascorbic acid. So we would use that, which is vitamin C. You can sprinkle on your fruit so that it doesn't turn brown. What about meat? You ever put meat in the freezer and it comes out and it's tough, it's brown, it's icky, it's got frost burn on it. So another type of chemical that change might happen is your acidity of your meat. And this happens when fat, such as fat and meat, is exposed to air over time. Always use freezer bags, freezer containers. When food is frozen, the water and the food freezes and expands. So your meat has cells, your vegetables, fruits have cell walls. The water goes in there and it expands, it freezes. And this makes the food a little bit soft as it thaws. Tomatoes are a good example of this. When a tomato is frozen and thawed, it's mushy, it's liquidy. Celery and lettuce don't freeze well because of the high water content. So not everything can freeze well. Make sure you pay attention at the end, we'll talk about what doesn't freeze well. Sometimes it's better to serve frozen fruit in a partially thawed state. The texture is a little bit more desirable. Changes are also less noticeable in high starch foods. So these all freeze well, your high starch foods. 
So freeze quick as possible. Set your freezer to the coldest setting. If you're freezing things like blueberries, you might want to put them on a cookie sheet, let them, let them freeze, and then put them in a bag together, a Ziploc bag. That way you don't have a big clump of berries. You can just get them out individually. Strawberries work, work well that way. Um, fluctuating temperatures, always have a freezer thermometer to know what the temperature in your freezer is. Now let's think about freezing foods. If I have green beans, this one's my garden, picked a lot of green beans. If I put them in the freezer after I water blanch them and it's stored at zero degrees Fahrenheit, it'll stay fresh and delicious for up to a year. If that freezer is at 10 degrees Fahrenheit, it only lasts for three months before it starts boiling. If my freezer is at 20 degrees, which isn't freezing, it's only three weeks. So your refrigerator might be 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll last five days before it starts boiling. So you can see how the freezer, zero degrees Fahrenheit or less, how that will stop the growth of a lot of bacteria in your foods. So, freezing. Green beans. Maybe you have no time for canning these days. So how do you freeze green beans? You wanna wash them real good, snip them, cut them, about two to four inch length, and then get a water in your pot boiling Throw them all in the pot for about three minutes, then drain them, cool them, and then you can freeze them. You can freeze them in some sort of freezer container. Now some things are out there that you cannot find a recipe for in your water bath or pressure can. There is no tested recipe for yellow summer squash. As much as you want to put it in the pressure canner and make up your own recipe, they have not found a tested recipe or they can't find botulism and other harmful bacteria growing. So you have to put it in the freezer if you're not eating it right now. So same thing, you wanna wash it, slice it, half inch slices, water blanch it. Only takes three minutes and then put them in your container. You can even grate zucchini for baking later, make some zucchini bread and put it in a nice freezer bag or freezer container. So freezer burn, if things do come out of your freezer, freezer burn, it is food safe. It just probably doesn't taste very well. So it happens when the moisture is lost from the surface of your food. Sometimes it's been there too long or the freezer container or bag isn't very uh, made very well. It might be holes in it and air is getting in. So the moisture is lost. This brownish spot appears. Your tissue of your meat becomes grainy, which is tough and dry. Um, so it's best just to remove those um, package frozen foods and heavyweight moisture resistant wrap to help prevent freezer burn. And since freezing doesn't actually destroy your microorganisms, you still have to cook things. You still have to cook them when they're done. Botulism doesn't grow and produce toxins that do your freezing. Freezers, choose what you want. You can have a chest freezer, an upright freezer, whatever you have room for in your homes, your space provides, what you can afford. Both work just fine. What do you tell people when you call and your freezer has gone out on you? Well, unfortunately, it happens. But you still want to be food safe. If your food has thawed, some can be refrozen, but you'll notice texture changes. Remember, there's the cell wall in your foods, and there's moisture in there. So when it freezes, it expands. When it thaws, it gets a little bit mushy. When you freeze again, it expands. So it's going to get a little bit of a texture change. If it's meat or poultry that's in the freezer, um, if the freezer stays at 40 degrees or below, then you can check your packages, discard if you see signs of spoilage. If it's vegetables, you can refreeze them. Uh, again, if there's anything that looks like spoilages, you want to just throw them away. Your shellfish, your shellfish or cooked foods, you can refreeze them only if ice crystals are still present. So if anything's still frozen or partially frozen, you can refreeze it. If not, you want to cook it up. If it's already thawed out, then you unfortunately have to throw it away. Fruits, your fruits can refreeze. Again, ice cream, partially thawed, you can throw it out. Breads, nuts, donuts, cookies, cakes, they can refreeze better than most anything. If you got that odor in there, <laughs> A good baking soda, or vinegar, activated charcoal will help to remove those odors. I always find a freezer safe container, whether it's a freezer container or a freezer bag. They're moisture vapor resistant, they're durable, leak proof, uh, resistant to oil grease. They're freezer safe meaning they won't turn brittle and break in those low temperatures and crack. 
um, easy to seal, easy to mark, so that you can label what year you're putting this stuff in your freezer and what it is. So some foods don't freeze well. Remember things that are high in water content don't freeze well, like lettuce and cabbage and celery and cucumbers. Um, things that don't freeze well are cooked macaroni and cheese, macaroni, spaghetti, rice, eggs, meringues, things that have a lot of um, fried on them, your onion wings, your french fries. Once they've been cooked and fried, you don't want to freeze them because you'll get a nice mushy product if they come out. It's best to season foods lightly before you freeze them and add a little bit of seasoning as you reheat them. Garlic and pepper and some other herbs get stronger after freezing. Some spices can become a little bit of an off flavor. Salt loses flavor, has a tendency to increase the acidity of your item. So you can definitely season it, season it right before you cook it. Freezing fruit, definitely a fun thing too. Again, you want to, if they're small little berries, you want to freeze them on a cookie sheet, let them partially freeze, and then put them in your freezer container. That way you don't get a big block of berries. You can just get them out at a handful at a time. Sometimes your fruits will tell you the sugar packet or syrup packet or dry packet, tray packet, unsweet packet. So follow your recipes. There's lots of great ways. And that way you'll have a good product when you take it out of the freezer. So fruits packed in syrup um, generally are best for uncooked dessert use. How much sugar you use depends on how sweet you want your fruit. So 40% syrup is about pretty much regular, pretty much good. A lot of syrup is desirable if it's a mild flavored fruit. Heavier syrups might be needed if it's a sour fruit. So to make the syrup, dissolve sugar in some lukewarm water, mix it until clear, and then chill before you use it. To make a sugar pack, which is just a sugar sprinkle, you just sprinkle sugar over your fruit, gently mix it. The juice is drawn out through the sugar. The sugar dissolves soft sliced fruits like peaches and strawberries, figs, plums, cherries. They yield enough syrup for peppering if the fruit's layered with some sugar. Some whole fruits might be coated in sugar as well. Dry packs, tray packs, which is like your blueberries, you just keep them on a single layer. Um, raspberries, blackberries. In addition to a dry pack, unsweet fruit can be packed in water, unsweet juice, or even pectin. Some fruits such as peaches, apples, pears, apricots darken quickly when exposed to air during freezing. So remember you need that ascorbic acid, that vitamin C to add to it. Vegetables, you have to water blanch your vegetables. Wash them really well, cut them if you need to. Water blanch according to the appropriate time. Using the National Center for Home Food Preservation chart to you know how long to blanch it. Not over or not under blanch, but just the perfect time. Blanching, there's water blanch, steam blanch, and microwave blanching. Once you blanch your vegetables, you can pack them. Drop pack or tray pack, whatever you prefer. So enjoy your home food preservation. Do it in a safe way. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow's topic is pickling. Have a great day.